That looks pretty good. You happy? We're live, Dan. We live? Apparently we're live. So we need to know if you can hear us or not. Hello, people. This looks nice. You like it? I do. That uh, is the biggest uh, tripod for the smallest camera type apparatus I've ever seen. I think it's important. It, I like that too. What do you reckon? Can you hear us out there in the world? Right. How do you, how do we know? Uh, um, oh, someone says hi. Ah, oh. uh, hi. Okay. Welcome to that pedal show VCQ. I'm Dan. <laughs> We're dealing with all kinds of new technology. Old technology that's new to us. Uh, how do we see the comments? Oh, hang on. Oh, come on, you. Mick, uh, which Wi-Fi is supposed to be on? Storeroom? Yeah. There we go. This is great, isn't it? Welcome. Magic. Yeah, so we had a um, show on Friday. Do I need to get the passcode? Uh, no, I should, be, I should be. No, we did a show on Friday. Oh, there we go, there we go, look. We already have 140 people watching. Do we? Yeah. How do you see the comments then? Here, look. Great. Can you turn the volume down? I can. I can. How is the audio? We've improved the audio, we believe. Let us know if you can hear our voices loud and clear, if they're better than last week, if they're loud enough, if they're not loud enough. Looks and sounds great. Here's Way! Catherine. Yay! Good. Do you need this? Yes, thanks. Oh. Thank you. Bye. You can stay in if you want, Bebus. We're no, live. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. Shall I, shall I shut these? Oh, thank you. Are yeah. You ready to go? Yeah, we yes. are. Everyone is everyone is very happy with the sound. Good. There this is go. this is all the rubbish that happens when we start filming on a normal that pedal show. But you don't see. But you don't see because yeah. it gets edited out. Anyway, right. VCQ from Friday. The show was has Dan found his ultimate flanger? So uh, I've written down the main questions from that show. Right. Daniel, shall we crack on? Yeah, let's crack on. Before we do, shall we reveal this? Yes. Let's do it. Dun, 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 dun. Hang on. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Right. This is for anyone interested. The first 100 Thorpey camo flanges ever made as a that pedal show limited edition run. Each pedal will have its own authenticity card and its own serial number signed by me and Dan. The first 50 are going to get offered to our patrons. And if you are a patron, you will have had an email by now. Current patrons. Current patrons, yeah. So don't sign up thinking you're going to... Um, I mean, get, sign up by all means. But... Get, get on that, yeah. It'll be current patrons because that email has already gone out. Um, the other 50 will go on sale on Wednesday the 27th of November at 8 p.m. GMT. So there are 100 available this week and they'll probably all be gone by the end of the week. And we're very honoured to do that with Thorpey. Very honoured. If you miss out, please don't panic because it's just the same as the regular camouflage and they're going to go on sale via Thorpey and his dealers from December the 1st. Yes. Yeah. Very the, good. The first 100, That Pedal Show Limited edition and we're completely honoured to do that. Yeah, it's amazing. There's little... um. Put together a little video that's going out. 7 p.m. tonight. Awesome. There's a video going out that tells the backstory, which is really interesting, actually. I didn't know a lot of that stuff in that video. That's wonderful. So a lot of people are going to say, well, as soon as you did your flanger show on Friday, surely it was rigged. Dan was always going to like the Thorpey best because you're selling them. Well, not at all. It's kind of the other way around. Yeah. He liked the Thorpey the best, so he decided to sell them. <laughs> yeah. As soon as, as soon as I heard it, because Adrian's been a good friend over the years, and the very first pedal we ever did was the Mushroom Cloud. Was the Mushroom Cloud, The yeah. infamous Mushroom Cloud. Yeah, and it, as you'll see in the video that goes out at 7pm, um, Dan was in part one of the people that gave Thorpey the, the courage and the confidence to go forward with his company. So there's... I bought him a beer. <laughs> There's a lot of good backstory. Please watch the video at 7 p.m. Right, let's move on, Dan. Let's move on. So, okay, we have better audio this week. Yeah. We've also turned on Super Chat this week. Right. right. I don't know what that means. But... Right, so there's a little little thing down here Yeah. that means that um, if you feel so inclined, right. you can say, hey, guys, um, 
Here's some cash. Oh, wow. Here's some dirty cash. <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> we're, sell- we're totally sold out, Dan. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Still. Some well, has got, hey. got to pay for the show, I guess. Right. Um, to wit. Uh, to woo. The VCQ from the show, from the comments on the show on Friday. Uh, Neil Gregson and Bobler42 made us laugh by saying, a flanger for Dan, a Dan flanger, or a danger. <laughs> If you will, a danger. I like oh, that. Very good. Spelt the same as danger. I think we could do some work on that. Danger, danger. Um, I'll read this, mate. If you do. Okay. If you, okay. Uh, sorry. If you watch that, I'll do this. All right. Sounds good. Um, now, lots of people wanted other flangers. Uh, whenever you do, a, whenever we do a video like that, and we include a bunch of pedals, clearly we can't do every pedal in the world. However, J Juck Stratfan, J Juck Stratfan wanted to see the Fox Gear Matress. Cameron Nelson wanted the Digitech X Series Turbo Flange. Robert Archer, SCB LBS, and Hermes Costa were surprised by the lack of MXR, as was I actually. I'm going to ask you about that soon. Johnny Ross and David Dight, hi David, wanted the Sub Decay Starlight. Benjamin Thibodeau, 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 uh, wanted the Kaplan Bread Zero Point. Glenn mm. Double R. Now, Double R, if that's really your name, that is awesome. And you should have a very short delay. Um, well, we just got our first super chat. Nice. Yeah. What's the question? Um, Dave Butch has just gone, whoa, you can send cash. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. We appreciate that. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Um, Zwid, Zwidar. Oh, sorry. Uzen. Trevor Dixon. So, Trevor Dixon's just uh, done the same thing. Thank you, Trevor. Nice. That's Wow, okay. This is great. This is great. This is fun. Um, on the subject of cash, I am still doing the Movember campaign uh, till the end of November. So the uh, my 14-year-old's moustache has got even more ginger than it was in, in week one, which leads to speculation about do I dye my hair or not? Uh, no, I don't. Um, but when you put goop in your hair, it makes it look darker. Right. It, it is, however, significantly darker than this. Bless you, Ty Roberts. He says, here's some dirty cash from Colombia. <laughs> Love the live VCQs. Thank you, Ty. That's... Wow. Um, uh, Zwid Rufen, Zwid R. Urzm, uh, wants the Moog F- MF flange. Doug Brett Mathewson says his Arian SFL1 would eat any of the flanges in the video. Which one? <laughs> I knew he wasn't listening. Sorry. Um... We're going to have to learn how to do two things at once. We're going to have to learn this. Well, how do we do that, do you think? Do you think we should get a screen? Like one of those heads up displays you get on a modern yeah. car. That would be cool. Like a um, glider jet. Doug Brett Matthewson says his Arian SFL1 would eat any of the flanges in the video. Okay. Still wasn't listening. <laughs> Someone else, Adam Worrell, has given us 10 bucks and says, buy a razor, gents. Thank you, mate. I will do that. <laughs> See, now when we do VCQ, when we did it live the first time, people complained and said we didn't answer the questions that were asked. And now we've got this as well, so I, I, we're going to have to work out a prioritisation here. Okay. Yeah. That's hilarious. How do you feel, Dan? I feel really good. Good. Um, Stanislav Migra wanted Walrus and uh, Earthquaker. Earthquaker came up a lot. Yep. Caleb Genheimer wanted the Fox Rocks TZF1 and Eric Norlander, hello Eric, wanted the TZF2. Steve Knox wanted the old TC Stereo Chorus Flanger. The Fox Rocks thing is really interesting. I've... I've um... I have reached out to Dave Fox on a couple of occasions to get some stuff in, and we just have to work that out. Because I've, out. I've, the, the, he made a pedal called Captain Coconut, yeah, which was is absolutely amazing, I don't really and, a, and, and a bunch of things, yeah, uh, and yes, I would love to try the flanger out. Um, it looks tighter on the uh, on the YouTube than it does on the phone. Then okay, I'm just going a bit closer. See if that. See if we like that anymore. Yes, but I, I definitely want to. Because um... the thing at the back's really annoying me, man. Okay, it doesn't matter. Because you can see the rigging. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and you've reached out to Fox Rocks. Yeah, and I because oh, I'd love to tr- see through zero flanging. Yeah. I'm. I. It's not. Necessarily. Uh, it's not the, the the flanger that I'm after. Right. I think it's really cool, but it's not the sort of thing that I want. I use all the time, but um, I really, really like um, the Fox Rock stuff. So, would be really up for for trying it out. 
There you go. Nice, that's slightly better. Is that okay? I think so. Still not quite square on the top there. You know that I can't. I just can't live with this kind of. I thing. understand. I understand. This, this is, and everyone else out, out there understands as well. This is all the stuff that happens. The trouble is, it's not real time, is it? So it's going to go really badly wrong. There you go. This is all the stuff that happens before we hit go on that pedal show. Oh, you had it. Yeah, I don't know. Ah. I'm just going to have to. I'm, I'm just going to have to not look at it. Anymore. Okay. All, all right. right. Yeah. Cool. I need to work this out for the future. I wonder if we can zoom in. I can't cope. Don't know. Maybe. Well, we had it. Anyway. Anyway. It's all good. It's near enough. All good. Uh, no brain says. Um, uh, he says he recorded his bodily functions. Right. And wants the sound of that in a pedal. What can we recommend? Uh, well, I don't know if there's anything that we can recommend. I don't um, know. I think some sort of combination of octave down and, uh, <laughs> and ring modulator. Uh, Caleb Genheim says the Fox Rocks is very tapey and not pedally. Yes, two different things for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Deco, Strymon Deco. Yep, definitely. Okay, um, Spiral Architect says the Hartman analog flanger sounded better than all of those. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, however, there were two. The two biggest questions were number one, why no boss BF3 or what the latest boss is? Yeah. Uh, why no boss BF? I have always. Actually, my first flanger was a boss flanger. Right. Uh, and they're great. I don't. I think the thing for specifically for me was when I found the mistress. There's, there's a character in the mistress that I've, I've been going for. Because of the filter. Be yeah, because there's something about the frequency range and the filter in it, and I, I haven't found it with anything else that I've been going for. Um, whoa, Eddie. That's very kind of you, Eddie. Thank you very much. Thanks, Eddie. Um, thank you for testing the new Super Chat. This is mad. Uh, I want my $2 says, I don't understand. And please don't send us money. But that's okay. It's <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, so specifically for me, when I when I found the Electric Mistress, it reinforced all those sounds that made me so fascinated with guitar in the first place, like Andy Summers and uh, Andy Summers and you know David Gilmore, and I started uh, understanding what it was that they were getting out of that. And it's really interesting because they they have very different sounds, right? Um, so it was specifically a character in the mistress that I was drawn to, but the mistress has a lot of drawbacks, you know, the volume being a thing. Um, and I've always loved the, the blending, uh, blending the mistress because it's such a strong character, even though I love it, it's just so strong. It's like, for me, it's like, I love the AC 30. It's amazing. But the character in that sound is so strong. As soon as you hear it, you're like, ah, oh, okay. That's what, that's that, what is. that is. And I wanted I wanted the flexibility to have that, but also go a little bit off. And that's what, you know, the having all the, the tone controls and all that stuff in there is amazing. But that blend control enable you to blend between your direct signal and the modulator signal is huge. Um, the, I, mean, I can't remember the last time I heard a BF, a Boss BF flanger, but for all the other people asking for MXR as well, uh, which included, God, loads of people... Um, who was asking about MXR? Somebody here. Oh, we'll get there in a minute. Um, so the MXR for, for me... Is darker, is, right? It's is darker, and it's always associated with the Van Halen but, yep, thing. Yep. And, and I really like that, but it's not... It, it's, it, it doesn't have that presence, that particular... Um, yeah, just that, that filtery thing that the mistress has. But I, I do like the MXR. That's what I was sort of driving you towards. It's that... that, that the MXR sound and the Boss sound is very, is quite different, isn't it? Yeah, from that, it is. from the from the filtery sound of the matrix, so, of the uh, Electric Mistress. So a couple of um, super chats. Ben Caffrey has said, "Non dirt pedals with high gain amp video, please." So what I want to do with that is get Rabia in. Hang on, what non non dirt pedals? Yeah, with a high gain amp. So use modulations and delays and reverbs with a high with a high gain amp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That'd be, that'd be great. I, 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 I want to get 
Rabia, for me, is someone who really understands those sounds and he understands them in context with everything. And mm. so I want to get him in. Um, we, we were in Japan last year with Ola and Rabia and we had so much fun. But the, the, it, was, <coughs> it was Ola and Rabia. I have to damp it. <coughs> Otherwise it blows your ears out, apparently. And it was... I, I've sort of always known this, but when you... Those two guys were shooting a video together. Actually, we even shot a video with them. It never came out because it was of technical, technical issues. Um, but it's fascinating seeing, because those guys have really gone down a rabbit hole in that high game world. And it's a whole other world. So, yeah, I want to get a, you know, get a beer on, um, or if Ola's in town, get It'd be good on. to know if there are any other questions other than how do I get my reverbs and delays sounding clean? Actually, we're, there's a great show coming up which questions standard pedal order, which will be in a few weeks, which was a real eye-opener for me, which I think is relevant to that game discussion. Sure. You know, should you put delays and reverbs before gain? Matt Presley has uh, said, here's something for the beer fun. Thank you, Matt. That's very kind. Thank you, Matt. We won't use it for beer. We'll use it to produce the show. We will indeed. And a rocket complex that says, have you told your wife about your mistress? One thing not to do is Google search electric mistress right uh you've, you've been warned Don't do, do google that. electric harmonics okay you know eh electric uh, yeah. mistress not just uh, electric mistress okay on the subject of electro harmonics daniel sundorg and james g robertson and pete clark are like why why didn't we have this the new standard stereo electric mistress from electro harmonics um why didn't we I'll bring it on the show. Yeah. Uh, it's not that I haven't tried it. I've tried it. I so like you, it. you don't think it stands up to the old one? Oh, no, it's, I, it, it's really good. It's really, really good. Come on, here's the post. Here's your flag. Nail it on. I... Here's the issue. I have I must have played through a dozen old electric mistresses. Yeah. They're all different. Right. Right? So, and it might just be that difference. There's a couple... Paul Stacey, Mark Johns, and mine are the three that I've heard and gone. Uh, uh, the three that I've gone, incredible. Um, so, yeah, 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 you know what I mean. Okay, that's that one. So it's it's rather than is the electro uh, is the electric mistress the best flanger ever made that you're trying to get a replacement for? The question is, you want one that sounds like yours. Yes. I want to dial some. in to be able to dial in that character thing that I, that I love about mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, line cliche says, oh dear, I'm awake. <laughs> you didn't say, oh dear. Good morning. It's a family show. Yeah, good morning. Um, no brain says, uh, is Mick's moustache real? <laughs> if, if it was fake, I'd want my blooming money back is all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's it's uh, in aid of Movember, which is a charity to raise awareness and money for men's health issues, including prostate cancer, uh, testicular cancer, mental health issues and stuff. It runs through November. Idiots like me grow a moustache. So people go, why have you got a moustache? And you can say, well, it's for charity, don't you know? And if you go to movember.com slash Mick Taylor, you can put even more money in there, which would be awesome because only a few days to go. Dan stepped in and we've raised nearly £1,500, which is a really big deal. So thank you to everyone uh, whether you've donated or not, for even just being aware of the cause. How do they find that, Mick? Uh, Movember.com slash Mick Taylor. Awesome. Uh, Dan Fisher has said, that pedal show rocks. Um, Favourite Friday moment is headphones and a cheeky bourbon while they're boring my family. Uh, ha. Also, more cod, more cord vlog videos, please, Dan. Um, yes, there's more of those coming up. We've got, actually, there's a couple of great ones. When we were in Germany, uh, we sat down with, um, Pete Thorne Pete Thorne and Paul Davids Paul Davids and uh, bass guy Adam Neely Adam Neely so I'm going to get those three out because uh, they're just so inspiring um, I want to break up the relentless pummeling of information just with some inspirational this stuff this week's was excellent if you haven't watched Dan's uh, vlog this week which I think went out on Tuesday it was talking about the basis of what chords are and how they are made. This is not new information. It's been around forever. But when you are presented with it in such a simple way, all kinds of doors open and it's just magic. It's a really good one, mate. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Just 
there was a question that came up yeah. about the chord that I played. Yes. And I said it was a major seven thing. Yeah, that now, was in this video, it was, wasn't it? It wasn't this, it was in this video, right? What have you done to your finger? I, I was training today and I've got to take my finger up and I haven't taken it off. So it's very, it's very gross. For and anyone that doesn't know, Dan does Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I got my fourth stripe on my blue belt on Friday night. Congratulations. Thank you very much, mate. Congratulations. See, my nephews do, uh, they're 10, almost 10, and they do uh, taekwondo. Right. And they're already black belts. Yeah. What have you been doing? Yeah, no, it's very, it's very different. Very, very different. Um, okay, I'll put that in my pocket because that's pretty gross. But yeah, so back to the chord vlog. And I'd, I'd said about this chord or this chord, I can't remember. So anyway, um, you were correct. I, when I said it was a major seven, because I, I didn't have the that note in there. I didn't have the major seven in there. I had this, uh, which okay. was the six. Oh, uh, yeah, I can hear so, that mile off, yeah. Yeah, but anyway. Um, that is correct. That's a six nine chord, and if uh, uh, so, anyway, because I did this cadence thing, which I like to do, and that's what those chords are. So it just adds that sounds like incidental notes. music on Friends. Yeah, right. Anyway, so but there's more of those chord blocks coming. Um, <laughs> uh, right, Jeff Martin. Oh, here's some love for Dan's last call. For Dan's last call vlogs. Thank you, Jeff. That's awesome. Uh, and Caleb Genheimer says TC Electronic should build the RI. Should sorry, should RI the SCF. But should you reissue the stereo chorus flanger? But W and input volume control. But, but with an input, input volume, volume control. control, it's so juicy. But lack of headroom kills it in a modern rig. Uh, new PS allows it. Uh, to reissue it as async file. It's very interesting. So they did this, which is not the same thing at all. This was like a digital version, which was just like the Corona Chorus in a different thing. But that Stereo Chorus flanger in its old uh, guise, it's amazing where they crop up. I saw one behind Joe Bonamassa's um, fleet of tweed amps doing, the, doing some of the signal split. Yeah. Yeah. It would be good to see, actually. Not that we would say anything about TC Electronic now being owned by Behringer and probably not interested in anything interesting. <coughs> uh, Gwisolo Mazable, I'm not sure, I apologise if I got that completely wrong. Does the camouflage, uh, can the camouflage make some more extreme sounds, kind of like the ADA? The video didn't show it. So yes, it can. So the interesting thing with the camouflage, the, the treble control and the harmonics control are sort of tied together. And with the treble control turned sort of all the way up. Yeah, and then with the, and then you, you'll find a spot with the harmonics um, that you can get those regenerating, sort of oscillating flanger tones. Yeah, we get, we, on the video that's going out at 7 p.m., you get close to it, but not yeah, yeah, actually yeah. into crazy. Sure. Yeah, but that's, because that's, I mean, that's, that's never been a prerequisite of mine. No. But it, you can get, you know, yeah, well, we found the, the Como Raby did yeah, that exceptionally awesome well, at that and stuff. the ADA did it pretty well, didn't it, as I remember? Yeah. From the first show? Yeah. Um, okay, let's have another question. Um, uh, uh, actually, we'll mention Mike Buckman, unemployable graduate, and SBJKD, who also wanted electroharmonics. The next question came from Gary Varner, Bektemba Ndami. Adam Stringham, who all wanted to know uh, about the Earthquaker Pyramids. We were quite impressed with that when we played mm. it. Um, have we heard it since? I uh, haven't heard it since. My So the Earthquaker thing, um, yeah, uh, let's let's try it out. My issue with that stuff being digital is, is it, it throws up an issue used in a wet dry rig. Yeah. Um, but let's give it a go. Yep, yep, yep. And also the filtering of the high end. All that stuff. Um, Chris Lambert, DJ Versun01, Evan Miller and Popeye. Um, why did the long amp Roxanne fall out of favour? So really liked the long amp Roxanne. And I thought, especially with overdriven tones, I thought it was fantastic. For me, it was the cleaner sounds. I got, I got that wrong in, I, I answered someone's question and said, I don't think he liked the overdrive tones, but you did. You yeah, were... the overdrive, I thought the overdrive sounds were really great. But yeah. It was the cleaner tones that I didn't, did, didn't quite nail it for me. Okay. 
Uh, PF Darkside One says, which came first, chorus or flanger? Which came so the flanger came first. So, um, do you remember Ichiku Park? Yes. Write the song, and that has some of the th some really early recorded flange sounds. So what they did was they matched up two uh, tape machines, right? And well, they were experimenting, and they someone put their hands on the reel and slowed down one, and then you get that that timing mismatch, the tape, flange, the tape yeah. flange. And so it was such an organic, natural thing to do. So such an uh, the the process and the outcome was so organic. But that's what they call call it a flange. And I think I, I might be wrong, but f from folklore has it that George Martin was talking to the guy that did it, and he said, oh, "I put my put the heel of my hand." On the tape machine, and George Martin said, "Oh, it's like you flanged." Oh wow! And yeah, so I, I, that's what I heard. I totally could, could be right. wrong. So PF Dark is that what you've heard too? He Fraser? says, <laughs> He's, "Yes." Get in! <laughs> I might have got one right. He says, "Obviously, tape flanging was older, but were short delays used for chorus first, then shortening the delay and adding regen sounded like tape flanging." No, tape flanging came first, as he just explained. Um, Uh, John Bazard says, love the chord blog too, Dan. Can't wait for, for TC Epstein's didn't kill himself pedal. Imagine the tone prints. <laughs> um, okay, that's going to be huge. Uh, Tom Bromby says, if you were limited to just two modulation pedals, what would they be? My choice, analog flanger and a harmonic trim. Boy, oh boy. That's tough. On my board at the moment, I've got the uh, jam pedals Ripley 4, which is chorus and phaser. And when you, so you've got chorus and phaser, but then when you mix them, you can sort of step into rotary speaker territory yeah. and you can sort of step into univibe territory. Not, it's not the same thing, but mixing those two together. And I'm sure that's true of other types of modulation pedals. Yeah. The, yeah, the CD. But it would be univibe and uh, harmonic tremolo for me. Yeah, right. So, so it's really interesting. One of the best Univibe sounds I ever heard was Dave Gregory manipulating his old BF2. Mm. So not a Univibe thing, but he certainly got a Leslie-ish yeah. tone from it. If you um, if you Google Tin Spirits plays um, Roundabout Live and you listen to Dave Gregory's solo <laughs> on that, that is Dave Gregory through a BF2 flanger. Nice. And it's, it's amazing. It's it sounds amazing. like a univibe. Yeah, it's really good. Um, okay. Chris Covington. Oh, thank you so much, Chris. When are we going to see the Morgan Jewel 20 again? Would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, it's around somewhere. Uh, it's over there. Yes, let's get it out. We, um, when we first used it, we were surprised it didn't have any headroom. And then we realised uh, the master volume was... Wasn't up all the way. All, and it's really got to be... All the way to And get. when it's up all the way, it's, it's very crazy nice. headroom. Yeah, let's have yeah. a swang on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nurture for Noises says, Kisses from Ikea Land. Thank you, Nurture for Noises. Um, and thank you for Ikea. Back. Yeah. I've been in there. Well, you've been spent oh, too man. much time lately. <sighs> Moved house, old house, new house, Ikea. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, while he's doing that, Gary Gaggles. Hello, Gary. You sound great. Gary Gaggles. Um, so glad you found your new flange, love Dan. Well done, Thorpey. Here's a question though: What's your favourite knob settings on the Muir Electric Lady, E Lady, when it was on your board? And do you still prefer flange into drive or drive into flange? Oh. So, Dan, set the Elect Lady up how you like it most. Boy, oh boy. And then, do you prefer flanger before or after drive? Now, from memory. I had to have the colour and the range turned up a little bit higher than I normally would on this. So it's past 12 o'clock with the colour and the range. And the rate, yeah, about there. The rate about uh, quarter to 11. If you could see that. So just, just to confirm that, the colour knob is about 2 o'clock. The range knob is about 2 o'clock. The rate knob is about 10.30 o'clock. Now then... What's going to be interesting about these VCQ live sessions in the coming weeks is we've just bought this new Blackmagic thing that's come out, which enables you to mix a number of cameras and a decent stereo audio feed. So we hope 
that in the future we'll be able to have some guitars and actually do stuff live. So you'll go, oh, what does this sound like with a setting like that? And we can we can do it. Very cool. That'd yeah. be fun. Yeah, yeah. But it's not it hasn't been released yet and it's getting released in a couple of weeks, so we've we've bought it. Anyway. Simon Nalji, uh great to see the donations coming in for production costs. Superb value at Thank you. and education. Here have a little more. Thank you, Simon. That's very That's kind. Super kind of you. Thank well, you. I, well, I'm blown away actually. This is I did not expect this. This is um amazing. Thank you, everyone. Wow. Yeah, Fraser's gonna get paid this week. <laughs> In mince pies. <laughs> um, Slowpoke at 5703. Aren't Matsushita and Panasonic the same company? Um, Matsushita owns Panasonic. Yeah, Is he says, correct? I believe Panasonic and National are brand names of Matsushita Electric Industrial There you Co. go. Tell you what was interesting. When we went to see Boss last October and you fly into Japan, you see towns like Yokohama. Yeah. Right, which won't be interesting if you're from Japan because you'll know this, but I've only ever seen Yokohama on a tyre. Mm. And there's like brand names, really famous brand names that you recognise are towns. That was a bit flat, wasn't it? No, sorry. I thought it was interesting. It is very interesting. Um, you know what I think is very interesting is that like Yamaha, so when we, where, wherever we... I'm not sure Yamaha is a town. No, no, it's not, it's not a town. But it's like it's, they make everything. Yeah. Right. And when we uh, was at the airport, we're going through some shopping center in Japan. Yeah. And there was just a display of stuff that Yamaha makes, and it went on and on and on. It's crazy. And it's sort of like um, when I was studying music, they had Yamaha grand pianos. It's just the most beautiful sounding instruments. Um, yeah. Anyway, there you go. What if we could start a corporation? And make everything from transistors to power boats. Weeping Guitar says Mick has an X-rated Tash. Yeah, it's pretty bad, isn't it? That's great. Yeah. It's wonderful. I, I don't know. I just wish... I don't, well, I wish lots of things. <laughs> Todd Air. Todd Air. Hi, Todd. Uh, Ted. Todd. Ted. Todd said Ted. No. Ted Air. Ted Air. Random question. Have either of you played the new Harmony guitars? I haven't yet. No. I didn't know there were new Harmony guitars. They look really cool too. I think that was prompted by the fact that I played the Supro uh, guitar, the James Port. Right. Um, in the flanger video, this thing. Oh, it used to be in an open tuning. Is there a link between Harmony and K? Guitars? Somebody smart out there in Watcher Land will give the right answer. Because I, I think... remember the um, uh, David Davis Davies from yeah. the Kinks. Because that riff on you really got me. He of Arm Through Flying V. Oh wow! Yeah. Awesome. But that that riff and you really got me. I think it's a K. But I but. I remember it being a, like a K harmony or something like they that. They were they were variously brand different brand names of um, I don't know about K and I actually don't know about Harmony, but certainly Silverline, Dan Electro, some of those other really famous. I'm trying to think of the other one that's really famous were brand names of of catalogs. Oh, I think. right. Okay. So a lot of the stuff might have been made in similar factories. Someone can can confirm or deny this. Okay. Now, is thank someone, you, Jacob Howard. Thank you, mate. Legend. Is someone else going to say that Jimmy Page played that uh, You Really Got Me riff? I've heard mm. that folklore. No, because i tell you why. Um, my dear friend Mark Johns, who's now my guitar teacher, who's been, like, he's been helping me out, but I, I'm actually having a weekly le lesson with him. Was he now. in Silverchair? No, but he used to play guitar for Ray Davies. Right. Um, that was Daniel, Daniel Johns. So Mark used to play guitar for Ray Davies, and when he left... <laughs> Uh, when he when he when he um, left to move back to Australia, he he called me and says, "Um, you know, well, I'm I'm leaving. Uh, do you want to have a go at the gig?" And I said, "No, I would love to, but there's no way I can." But I said, "I know someone who would love to." Yeah. And so, um, so I gave Dave Gregory a call. Yeah. And says, "Um, we've honked Dave once already. We have honked Dave already. <laughs> we can have another one." But so Dave took a whether it was the I can't remember it's like the K harmony or something like that because he knew that was the guitar that Dave 
used to oh, record no that riff. And Ray said to him, that's, that's actually, that's not how he plays it. Is it not? It's this. It's this. It, apparently it's... Oh, okay. Don't play too much more, otherwise you can yes, take of a lot of money. Sorry. But, uh, but Ray said to him, I haven't heard it played like that since my brother. Because it just that, it takes that guitar to get that sound. So anyway, that's amazing. Um, right. Sorry, here we go. Okay. Ner Nurture for Noises says... Oh, thank you, Nurture. Says, Dan, is your high watt tape echo still broken? Would you sell it if it is? It's it's poorly. It has been fixed a number of times. It still doesn't sound right, but I would... I No, one day I'll get that fixed properly because it's an amazing sounding thing. Um, thank you. Oh, so Ian Nichols says, when is the Greg Cock episode coming out? Pretty sure I heard you guys mention it uh, in a video recently. Greg is one of my favourite players and super entertaining to hear him talk. <laughs> Hilarious. So Nick and I were in Denmark two, three years ago. I can't even remember. And Greg was there as well. And we spent one of the most enjoyable evenings with, with another human. We were aching for days afterwards just from laughing these muscles here oh boy and, and here when you're laughing so hard for so long and yeah and so he has this, he, he has been on the show with his band as well so that episode's coming out soon and yeah, yeah can't wait to share it's it with not you. this friday so it might be the following friday right okay um uh, maybe tim sneed oh thank you tim that's very kind i've learned so much from tps over the years my tone and inspiration to play are leaps and bounds from where they were yes. thank you dan and mick that's Everything. That's the best thing to hear. Thank you so well much. Well done, Tim. Thank you. Wow. Uh, okay, then. Uh, S. Ignor. S. Ignor. E. Signor. Curious to see what Dan thinks of the new Wampler Terraform. It's digital, mm. but it does have a blend function. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think ours is here. Right. And I'm going to give it a go. So at NAM last year, we had a play with it. It's, yeah, it's great. So, yeah. Be fun. Felix Jordan, or Felix Jordan, uh, Loet Bram Cork, Jimmy Arsenault, Neil Partica, Doug Floyd, all told us that Steve Stevens' solo album uh, and band was Atomic Playboys. Atomic Playboys. We were yeah. trying to remember that, so there we are. Paddy Blight has mentioned. Uh, Paddy! Paddy! For anyone who doesn't know, Paddy plays the not guitar in the That Pedal Show band, among many other good things. The big guitar. Yeah, the big one with four yeah, strings. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he wants to know if I've had any luck with Eric Johnson. So I got a I got a message last night from someone who's friends with Eric, and he says, oh, I, he messaged me saying, I would love to see Eric on your show. Wow. And um, and then he sent me a message, and he says, and says he's talking to Eric, and he says, I can honk, honk Eric Johnson. I can honk him as well. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's a bit loud. Sorry. So... And Eric oh. replied, Eric, he said, you know, would you would you go on the pedal show? And Eric replied, um, uh, he said, well, I haven't been asked. I said, sure, but I haven't been asked. And I had no other way to contact him. And it was late. And I, I this was probably the wrong thing to do. But I went on the Eric Johnson page and I just said, um, hi, Eric. It's Dan from that pedal show here. I didn't, I don't, this is probably the wrong way to reach out to you. Um, but we would love to have you on the show. And because Mick and I are both big fans and seen you a number of times and, you know, la la. Because um, he is one of those guys who, I mean, man, just imagine sitting with him for an hour and just picking his brains. <laughs> so I put that on the on the Eric Johnson page and everyone's just going, yeah, make this happen. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> so uh, I haven't heard back from Eric yet. And I apologise, Eric, if that's the wrong way to do it. I'm <laughs> probably sure it is the wrong way to do it. But... That's what I do. Oh, I am yeah. ready, fire, aim at the best of times. Um, so anyway, we'll that, see. That would be amazing. I've had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of times and standing up close to those marshals and the, uh, the deluxes and stuff. And yeah, it's pretty special. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, clearly anyone of Eric Johnson's stature is welcome on that pedal show anytime they want to come on. I just, we, we don't ask... To be honest, I, I think I've got a bit of a hangover from Guitar Magazine days, getting so bored of asking David Gilmore to come on, to come in the mag and being told to politely do politely know I'm washing my hair. I just I don't really like asking people. Okay, and I'll ask him. I'm very happy. Yeah, to yeah. Ask so him. maybe we should just ask a few people and see. Yeah, 
Uh, Very happy to. Yeah. Normally the way it happens is we know a friend of a friend who's a tech or a gu- or makes guitars or we have a, a close friend who is a close friend. That's usually the way it works. But yeah, one, once you get management and... Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not oh, man, it all just falls over. We've been lucky the... in the sense that you and I are, are friends with lots of people in the industry and so we had some wonderful guests through that. Yeah. Um, and that's, I mean, that is the best way to do it. But I don't know Eric. No, or anyone and, in his camp. Or, no, and I just thought, well, I, I'm going to, yeah, what I've got to ask. Yeah, you know. would be would be amazing. Um, on the subject of amazing, Mark Hammer, I just want to say thanks to you for your endlessly interesting comments. Mark always um, posts on TPS videos, usually some really deep technical knowledge mm. that either we don't know or we don't have the time to go into on the show. And it's always an education reading your post, Mark. So thank you. Yeah, it's awesome. just a general thanks for, for your comments on the show. Um, Brandon Ingersoll also asked the Greg Cock question, which we've just answered. Um, Dan Smith says, presumably not the Dan Smith. I don't know if Dan Smith is still with us. Dan Smith of Defender Strat Rebirth. Apologies if he's not. Anyway, um, slightly off topic. Dan, do you have some photos of the years, over the years of the wear and tear to red? Oh, interesting. I'm sure I do, but I haven't catalogued it. Would be good to see it when you had it first. I'm sure I've got some pictures of it brand new out of the Let's box. Let's do that. Okay, let me find it. Let's totally That'd do that. That'd be really interesting. Um, and the last one that I've taken off the uh, video from Friday, Todd Hess, when will the Thorpey Flanger be available? Um, well, well, Todd, for anyone who missed it earlier, there's going to be a hundred available with the That Pedal Show logo on. Uh, 50 of which are getting offered to patrons and if you are a current patron you will have had an email with details about how to buy one the other 50 are going on sale Wednesday the 27th of November which is this Wednesday at 6pm 8pm 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 GMT on the That Pedal Show store we got 50 uh, 50 will be released there 50 to patrons so that's 100 in total individually serial numbered um, and signed by me and Dan with a card Um and then after they're gone, Thorpey will start selling them. So don't panic if you don't get one. It's exactly the same circuit. The only difference with these is they say that pedal show on them um, and they are serial numbered thusly. One to a hundred. First hundred ever made, which we're really... Yeah, amazing. Video going out at 7pm if you want to watch the story of that. It, oh my God, it seems planned, Dan. It seems like we're, we're, we're actually planned for a change. Just a happy, happy accident. Like we can say facts about things that are going to happen <laughs> instead of sort of loosely going, well, you know, maybe that'll happen at some point in the future. Uh, What's coming in over the waves then? Right, so Nathan Sink says the world needs a That Pedal Show current move with John Mayer. That would be a Nathan Sink? Nathan Sink has said the world needs a That Pedal Show current mood with John Mayer. I love current It's so good. Current mood is so good. If you, don't, if you haven't watched John Mayer's current mood on his Instagram... Uh, channel Instagram TV I think it is or maybe it's Instagram stories or something like that I don't know I don't really understand Instagram oh, Patrick Payne has said the harmony was JC Penny's version Silvertone was the Sears version of all the same guitar and K was a similar level or maybe oh there you go I was, I was mostly correct then. there you go yeah I'm sure I've read that in many of the articles that I've edited over the years Jacob Howard has sent us has sent us more money bless you Jacob and then Jeremy Colossa says, sorry, I just got here. Why does Mick have a pawned hat? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fair question, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy. Yeah, it's a fair question, Jeremy. Um, uh, it's for Movember, which is a worldwide charity movement to raise money for men's health awareness issues. Movember.com slash Mick Taylor. Uh, and it, the, it's there for that exact reason, because people are like, why have you got a moustache? Which, of course, about 10 years ago, in the UK anyway, nobody had a moustache. Now, all the crazy kids have got moustaches. It seems to be not such a ridiculous thing. And if you've ever been to Germany, a moustache has always been okay in Germany. Yeah, right. See, because I already had the full dirty Santa vibe. So I, because I couldn't grow it, so I shaved it off to, to, you know, to add to the... Yeah, and we went from about £300 to nearly £1,500 with Dan... Shaving live on YouTube. That was hilarious. Um, Tom Harrell says, um, 
Thanks, Jets. Uh, Mick, are you getting that vintage strat for Christmas? Can you do a vid? Sorry, can you do a video where Mick plays a helix for the whole video? I'm only joking. Um, <laughs> he doesn't want to hear it. Says a rude, rude word. Thanks, Jets. Nick, are you getting the vintage track for Christmas? Uh, on the subject of Helix, it's so funny. A friend of mine, um, Ross, is product manager for Line 6. Uh, I've known Ross Bailey for many years. He is a superb guitar player. Um, he's worked for Yamaha. He's worked for lots of companies over the years. Anyway, so when, when we did the Iridium show, there was a, a, a comment from Ross came in saying, when am I coming to see you then? But I'm up for an HX stomp. I think um, we played one at a Guitar Breaks event we did just recently. And uh, I think it's... Um, I think we should have one in the arsenal. Sure. And I think when we're doing things like flanges or whatever, we should use that, that. alongside the MD500. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I just I really want to get to this point where this whole is it better or worse question just goes away. Mm. And it's just about, well, this is a viable option and we can just deal with that rather than a load of kind of like, no, it's a stake in my heart. Which it was for many years. Sure. So uh, on the subject of the track, no, I'm not getting it for Christmas. However, I will still have it at Christmas and hopefully next Christmas as well because it is on long-term loan. However, Mike at ATB... <laughs> has found me a telly. ...posted a picture of one that was almost identical. No way. Refin 6... It's a 62, actually, I think it is. But right. Like Refin... And I was looking at it going, wow, that looks really similar. Wow. We but have yeah, 827 people watching us. Oh, that's amazing. It is amazing. Us. Uh, I will get one one day, but while well, that one's well, this one is still here. I'm just very happy for it to be here. So that's a 1961 uh, refin. Has the the neck been oversprayed? Yeah, right. I would have thought so. Yeah. See that little back. Nice. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's a cool guitar. It's that a cool guitar. Sounds amazing. Yeah, it really does. And you'll hear actually in the in the video coming soon uh, why it's become a problem for me because every time you play it, it's like I'm uh, I'm at my, I'm outgunned. Is it, it is the only guitar in our, in our whole arsenal that sounds. Um, beefy and has depth next to red. All the others are a bit weak next to red. Right. Even the humbucker guitars. Mm. And this one seems to um, seems to stand up. The bridge. So, because the bridge pickup on that. Can you tell me why? That. I do, so that's quite a low output thing on that, but and yet. It's like a sledgehammer, that thing. I can't tell you why. Mark Foley could. Hello, Mark. <laughs> or Ron Ellis could. <laughs> Ron Ellis could? Yeah. We met Ron Ellis. What a lovely guy. We did. And there's some, some pickups of his going into my blue strap very soon. I'm just looking for a picture that I'm just going to share with you here. Uh, this is good, isn't it? No, it's just crazy. I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to believe that an old guitar could, could be so different. But it is. Anyway, here we are. Oh, come on. This is terrible. Here we go. Bruno Cachetta says, when you get Revere on the show, please talk about using compressors with, no compressors with noise gates and overdrives, and also why it's red, why red's finish hasn't cracked yet. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Do you see that? Yeah, I can. Look at that. So 3 61. Nice. So cool. I took it to bits the other day to just adjust the truss rod a bit. Nurture for noises wants to know if he can get a honk. He did. Um, this is for Nurture for Noise. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's one of the best ones ever. Sorry, I'm having to damp it a bit like you would play a trumpet. Um, uh, because it will blow the mics out and everyone will moan. Dan says, Dan, please grab the strat and play it for a few seconds. Yes, I'm going to do that. This strat? That strat. Oh, yes.
It's a very special guitar. It really is. We were filming um, a couple of weeks ago, well, when you, when you had not long had it, and I ended up um, crashing over at your place and got up in the morning and, and had a play on it for about half an hour. And yeah, it's something about it. There it really definitely is something about it. I was just checking. I adjusted the truss rod to put a bit more relief in, and I was just checking how much had gone in. Not not hardly any actually. So, so that action's probably a bit low for you, isn't it? A little bit. Ah oh, man, what's this question about victory amps? Uh, there's only one place in Canada that sells victory amps. That needs to change. Uh, yeah, right. Victory amps, if you're watching this. Actually, I do. Know, I do know people at victory amps. Well, nine um, after nine oh nine. That's well. That's very kind. Thank you, mate. Wow. Um, Albus. Band says, love your love your Ox EP. Okay. Dan, your lyrics brought me to tears. Also, just tracked um, with a 66 Princeton. It was magic. You need one. Uh, thank you. That's very kind. Um, we did. Uh, we, we're trying to get a Princeton. Yeah, I'd really like a Princeton. I want a Princeton. The one they, the, the, um, they did a special edition one that had a 12 inch speaker that we played at Rift City, which sounded blooming amazing. I want that with a Pro Junior. I think that would be a yeah. cracking wet dry rig. Yeah. Awesome. Any more questions? Uh, what just loads. Millions. So people are saying plug it in, plug it in. Um, uh, we can't because of the microphones, but we have just bought a a thing that's going to enable us to mix some cameras and do a better audio mix so that we can do that in the future. So upcoming on these live sessions, we will have a couple of amps plugged in and we can do that in the future. We're just waiting for the little bit of tech to arrive that enables us to do it. All right, Eli Hansen has said, Dan, 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 more Dans. Uh, sorry, this is the only way to hopefully get this question seen. Is the Thorpey or Retrosonic closer to a vintage mistress for a project trying to sound like from the 70s? Well, I would say if you want a pure vintage mistress thing, then the Retrosonic. Um, but I can get those vintage mistress things with the Thorpey, but I can go beyond that. But if all you want is a vintage yep. mistressy thing, then the Retrosonic, I yep. would say. And the, um, wasn't the, uh, the... Hartman? No, the one that you like the overdrive sounds on, but let's say the clean sounds. Wasn't oh, that the, very the, close? The, yeah, the Roxanne. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah very similar close. To long amp Roxanne. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the Retrosonic seems to have got everybody happy with... On, on the video on Friday, lots of people said they really loved that, the sound of that. Uh, Yamazaki1923 says, so thankful for your efforts, for your efforts uh, in this community. This is pennies compared to what I've received from TPS. That's so kind. That's very kind of you. Thank wow. you. Wow. Ah, you guys. Well, wow. okay, awesome. Um, to six o'clock. Are we caught up with everything? I, th I think so. It's okay. an hour. It's an um, hour. Pretty much. I think we've dealt with everything. So, yeah, for anyone who didn't get it, patrons, you'll get an email about this. You will have had an email about this. So if you're a patron, please check your email uh, and your spam folder. So, and it's for current patrons as well. If you join up now, you won't get the yeah, email. Yeah, the email's already gone. The email's already gone. So if um, you've got that email. So there's a, there's a chance for patrons to snaffle one of the first 50 if you're not a patron and you miss that, there's another 50 going on sale at that pedal show store on Wednesday, the 27th of November at 8 p.m. GMT. And if you miss that, I'll be amazed if we sell 100 flanges. Um, if you miss that... Uh, you always say that when we say... Well, 100 overdrives. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, 100 flanges. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, uh if you miss that, then they'll go on general release from Thorpey from December the 1st. So there'll be plenty to go around. Although, I would imagine he has limited numbers of those chips. Yeah, the particular chips. I mean, the first run and all the ones in the shops will have those we'll chips. We'll use that chipset yeah. and then when they run out, something else. No Brain says, great show, guys. Have a, have a pint on me. Thank you, No Brain. It will all go towards production costs for the show. But, um, uh, you know, I might sneak in a can of White Lightning here and there. And... <laughs> oh, White Lightning. 
Oh, uh, someone says, oh, Matt Lenz says, ah, rundown of all the guitars in the studio. We should so do that. We should do that on a live. We'll have everything plugged in. Just so have everything Perfect. plugged in and yeah. we'll just go around everything that's here. Um, that's great. It's been really nice, actually. A few weeks back, we just got some guitar racks and put the guitars down the sides. Because quite often what happens is if you um, either don't bring them here on a filming day or they're away in cases, you can forget that that guitar would be really appropriate for this thing because your brain is you know, trying to concentrate on filming the show and getting a good sound and you, you forget for a second that there's a Gretsch over there in the cupboard that would sound really blooming brilliant. But with it out on the stand, we can do a lot more of that and it's been, it's been good to do that. So I think we should do a live, plug in a couple of amps mm. and just go around all the guitars that are out and that would be really interesting. Lovely. Uh, Nick, Nick B Music says, sorry, Nick K B Music says, when will you get some Lawrence Petros design pedals on the show? Seriously, epic pedals that need the spotlight. Okay, so here's how that works. Um, just in case you don't know, uh, you can't pay to have a product featured on the show. Um, we decide what topics we want to talk about and we'll choose the gear that's appropriate for that. Um, but people do can send pedals in and if we like it, and we can use it on the show, great, but um, we don't own the pedals, they're simply on loan. So there's a, on the website, at that, uh, the, the website, <laughs> on, on, on the website, that pedal show store, sorry, that pedal show.com, there's a link about sending gear. So yeah. if you've got a, a favorite manufacturer or a favorite pedal manufacturer, um, and you think you'd like to see their stuff on the show, get them, send them to that link, yeah. and it tells you all the information about the pedals. Yep, that's how that works. Because we don't know everyone. And yeah, we exactly. don't own everything, so it's impossible to do everything all the time. I yeah. think most people understand that. But yeah, what was the name of the brand again? Uh, Lawrence Petros. Lawrence Petros. Design. Yeah, our apologies. I haven't heard of Lawrence no. Petros before, so... There you go. Could be a whole new beginning. Awesome. So, Good. Right. We're done? We are done. Okay, people, thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah. Massive thank you to all our patrons. Uh, look out for that email. Um, massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe, which is uh, Anderson Music of Guildford and Surrey, and in Australia. Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Lovely. And also to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed stuff for Christmas. It's getting busy. It's getting very Catherine's, busy. Catherine's packing orders at this moment, so there'll be a few happy uh, TPS people out there in the world on Christmas morning when Santa fills his sack. <laughs> <laughs> with that pedal show goodness <laughs> brilliant cheers guys have a great day we'll see you soon bye see ya <laughs>